Hi guys, in today's video I'm going to be installing this reverse osmosis system. This is the Hero 4 stage 75 gallon per day RO system by Aquaflow. The main reason that I'm installing the RO system is that our well water quality and taste isn't the best. And let's just say this RO water tastes a lot better. Some other benefits is not having to constantly bring in jugs of water and that the flow rates are usually much faster than a water cooler. In this test, almost a full 30 seconds faster to fill one liter. Before running out and purchasing a reverse osmosis system, it is a good idea to have your water tested. This will give you a good idea on what you actually want to filter out and what filters will work best with your water. As you can see here, our total dissolved solids are quite high and above the Canadian drinking water guidelines. Some other factors to consider when purchasing is the amount of RO water you'll require at one time. This is determined by the storage tank. It is important to note that the capacity of the tank doesn't indicate the amount of usable RO water since there's an air bladder or cushion within the tank. Roughly half of the tank's capacity will be usable RO water. This being a three gallon tank, there will be roughly one and a half gallons of RO water available at one time. This capacity is easily increased by installing a larger tank or connecting two or more tanks together. Another important factor is the recovery rate. This is the amount of RO water that can be produced in a given time. This unit is rated for 75 gallons per day or 3.1 gallons per hour. Units with booster pumps will usually have higher recovery rates. Lastly, checking your water pressure to ensure the RO system will function properly. RO systems will have a minimum and maximum water pressure spec. With all the information now collected, you can find a unit which meets your requirements. This Aquaflow Hero spec sheet checks all the boxes and that's why I made the decision to go with this model. This four stage RO system includes a booster pump, five micron sediment filter, two carbon filters, an RO membrane, three gallon storage tank, faucet, tubing and fittings, filter wrench, and a power cord. Though it's much more common to install the RO in the kitchen cabinet, I'll be installing it in the mechanical room because it's much easier to change the filters, and if there's ever a leak, it'll just land on the concrete instead of the kitchen cabinet. I'm mounting the unit with my own supplied rubber grommets and felt pads to reduce the vibration from noise from the booster pump. The first connection I'm making is the cold water supply. If installing the unit under the sink, a T is usually included in the kit, which is installed between the kitchen faucet's cold water shutoff and the supply line. There's a correct way to connect small diameter tubing such as this. The nut goes on first, followed by the ferrule. Do not use brass ferrules on plastic or nylon tubing. The brass ferrules are designed for brass or copper tubing and not plastic. Use a plastic ferrule on plastic tubing. The ferrule is tapered. Install it on the tubing so that the narrow side of the ferrule points towards the fitting or valve and the wide end faces towards the nut. Slide the tubing insert in fully, then insert the tubing as far as possible into the fitting or valve, followed by tightening. To properly connect the push fit or push to connect fittings, first remove the retaining clip, then depress the collar to release the connection and remove the plug. Insert the tubing fully, then reinsert the retaining clip. This line I'm running now is unique to this unit and I'll explain its function shortly. I 
All right guys, so I got the feed line ran here and I just want to stop for a second to explain this line a little bit more. Some of these RO systems waste quite a bit of water, as much as four to one. So for every one gallon of RO water you're producing, four gallons is pumped down the drain. So one of the deciding factors to get this RO system is that it wastes little to no water and it, the wastewater from the RO system actually gets reinduced, reintroduced back into the water distribution system. So this line here is your wastewater. It has to be connected minimum of 10 feet prior to this unit or upstream of this unit. So what I'm gonna do is run it up along here, up along the joist, and I'm gonna tie it in before my water filtration system, which they also do recommend as well if you have a water softener or a home filtration system like this one, is to tie it prior to your filtration system. But I'm gonna tie it up here uh, that's an outside hose bib and I'll just put a T in there and connect it that way. So then all the wastewater from the RO is going to be reintroduced into the system upstream of the filter. And then it'll most likely be used for, you know, filling up toilets, opening up faucets, showers and stuff like that. I'm shutting off the water to the house, opening up a faucet to relieve the pressure and tying in my recycled water line. Next is connecting the storage tank. The valve on top usually requires hand tight only. Careful not to over tighten as it is plastic. I also built a stand for the tank to keep it off the floor. I'm running the drain water to the floor drain and half inch PVC. If you're installing the unit under the sink, the kit comes with a drain saddle. Install it upstream of the P-trap. It requires drilling a hole in the drain and it uses a rubber gasket to seal against the piping. I'm securing the power cable to the drain line, but don't plug in the unit just yet. The final line is to the faucet, which runs about 75 feet across the basement and through four different rooms. I'm going to run it in half inch pecs.
So I just reached into my tool pouch and I was like, what the heck did I cut myself on? I know I don't have any open blades in there. I'm usually pretty careful with that. And I pull out my Lennox cutter, which I've had easily five plus years. And what I didn't ever notice is that the blade is actually exposed on the backside. That's an extremely poor design. So I went to grab the cutters. I actually squeezed my finger directly onto the, the blade. If you're wondering why I'm drilling so far forward in the cabinet, it's because the back of the cabinet ends up being too close to the exterior wall in the basement and risks the chance of freezing the line. I'm sealing the underside of the faucet with plumber's putty and securing from underneath. Time to install the filters. This unit comes with grease for the filter housing o-rings. I typically grease all the o-rings at once, then change to a set of clean gloves to install the filters. Be sure to check with your manual to see which order your filters are installed. This unit also recommends sanitizing the storage tank with a half teaspoon of hydrogen peroxide or common household bleach during the initial startup and is added into the tube at the storage tank. All right guys, we're looking pretty good here. Before you get too excited and want to turn the water back on, just double check all your connections. Just grab them, give a little wiggle, make sure they're not loose. 
On this model, everyone with a white collar has a blue retaining clip, and the ones, ones with the gray collar don't have any clip to hold them in place. But just go around, check every single connection, make sure they're not loose, make sure you're not missing a clip. The other thing is just make sure your valves are all in the closed position. So we got your feed line and then this is, I guess I'll call it a recirc or a redistribution line for the drain. And then your tank is also in the off position as well. The valve upstairs for the faucet is also off and we'll leave it off until we get the system pressured. So we're just gonna turn the water back onto the house and then we'll pressurize the system. Open the main water valve slightly to allow the system to fill slowly. The faucet is still open from before and I'm letting it run until the air is purged. Then opening the valve fully and closing the faucet. Open all the valves and allow the system to pressurize slowly and check for leaks at all your connections. Plug the unit in and wait for the storage tank to fill. Depending on the size of your storage tank and recovery rate, this is usually one to two hours. You should periodically check on the unit for leaks as the tank is filling and pressurizing. Once the unit is fully pressurized, open a faucet and allow it to completely drain. Then close the faucet. Do not drink the water at this time. Allow the system to fully repressurize, open the faucet once again, and this time leave it open for 24 hours. After 24 hours, close the faucet and allow the system to repressurize. The RO system is now purged and ready for use. This flushing procedure is based on manufacturer's instructions. Always refer to your manual for safe startup procedures. So it's all pressured up and ready to go. And I just want to go over a quick summary of all the connections because I know it was a lot all at once. So what we have here on the far right, this is my cold line header. So the cold water is entering the system and into the filter. This is a five micron sediment filter. And to be honest, I probably will never have to replace it. And that's because I have a whole house Water filtration over here at one micron, so five microns should never even be getting to that RO system. I was getting a lot of comments on this video about when and how often you have to change this filter. And it's totally dependent on your water usage and also the quality of your water. We have extremely hard water and a lot of total suspended solids. As you can see in the filter, it's catching a lot of the particles. But that video came out about five months ago, and if you look at the pressure drop between the filter, we're at 48 PSI and 48 PSI. So I have no pressure drop. I'm not gonna change the filter, and I suspect I'll have to change this filter at probably a year mark or a year and a half. But I won't be changing it until the pressure drop is great enough that it actually bothers me. All right, so back to the RO system. When it exits the sediment filter, it enters the carbon filter, and then it goes from there to the RO membrane, and then it passes from that to a secondary carbon filter. Uh, this line in the back here is to our pressure tank, our three gallon pressure tank. The drain line also comes off the back and goes to the floor drain. What's kind of nice about this is I live in really dry Alberta, and I would have to add a bucket of water to the floor drain every month because it would evaporate and create sewer gas smell in the mechanical room. So the RO will add a little bit of water to the floor drain each day and it'll kind of act as a trap primer and I won't have to add water to it. And this line here is for the wastewater and it gets introduced back into the system, flows up along here and ties in just on the other side of my hose pit. And this water savings was important to me because I'm on a well system and the production rate of the well is quite low. So any little bit of water I can save is a bonus. And this leads us to a final line, which this line goes all the way up and probably travels about 75 feet to our faucet. 
Runs all along here. And I'll jump over to the other room where it uh, pops out. Pops out on this side here. Runs along the floor joist. This is that giant cistern I was talking about that I'll be just ripping out. It is not needed. Just kind of runs along the other piping here. And up through the kitchen cabinet to the faucet. Pops out of the kitchen cabinet here. Up to our faucet. We're able to get some arrow water. Well guys, thanks for watching and hopefully you found this video informative. And like always, liking, commenting, subscribing is always greatly appreciated. Till next time.